Okay, everyone, we've got a couple announcements and then we'll go ahead and get started. First announcement, just as a reminder, if you have not already and you plan to use the hotel shuttle to the airport, please check with the front desk to schedule that. Again, if you plan to use the hotel's free shuttle to the airport, please check with the front desk to schedule that. Uh, the second announcement is a bit of good news that I, I think has been uh, eagerly anticipated. We do have extra stickers and bags at the front desk. Yay! Please take them. Please take them. We do not want to send any back with us. So please do take them. Uh, I often get asked, you know, how many can I take? We're, we're not going to set any maximum. Just please be respectful to your colleagues. You know, take some, not all. If you'd like to wait to see if you can take them all, then by all means, you're welcome to, to wait until everybody else has had a chance. But just be reasonable. Uh, take, take a reasonable amount and be respectful to your colleagues. But we don't want to take any home, so don't be shy. Okay. With that, we are going to get started, and we're actually going to start this session with a video that Debbie referenced yesterday. This is a video from 60 Minutes that was shared with us from our partners at Generations United. Debbie first saw it at their conference in Portland just a little bit earlier this summer, and just really thought that the impact of it was such that it, it warranted some time here as well. It is about grandparents raising grandchildren, and as I think we heard at multiple points yesterday and today as well, that's a phenomenon that is intimately connected with the opioid epidemic and the issues that we've all been talking about uh, across the whole morning and yesterday as well. So with that, if we could go ahead and show the video, please. So, can you hear me? There are no words. Um, I brought my Kleenex. When I was in Portland, um, uh, the Generations United actually gave 60 Minutes an award for capturing this. And I also had the privilege to meet the lady that started the Grand Families. But more importantly, there was a panel, and I had the opportunity to meet one of the young ladies, the children in the film. And she started talking about her experiences and how impactful her grandmother was on her. And she started crying. And she said, but my grandmother died today. So the whole room was silent. So as we work for seniors, I want you all to think every day as you work in this crisis that we're seeing in every community across America. And you know, it doesn't matter the demographics. It doesn't matter where you grew up because it's affecting everyone. You may not have a family member that's affected or a friend that's affected, but your community's being affected. So on the days when you all think things are bad, think about this video. Think about the face of that little girl, Cheryl, who became parentified. Think about the days they had, the kids that got left at the gas station. And you know what? our life's not so bad. So thank you for all you do in this space and in all the spaces that you work with. Our seniors are affected so many ways and I serve on the Federal Council for Grandparents Raising Grandchildren and this crisis is just getting worse and worse and worse every day. So when you have a bad day, realize we don't have a bad day, but also pat yourselves on the back for all the work that you do for seniors and older Americans across the country. Thank you to 60 Minutes. Thank you, Brian, for showing that. There are brighter things to talk about today. Um, so good afternoon. I want to welcome you to our last plenary session. Um, I've had a tremendous experience today talking with all of you. I always enjoy to see faces that I know, but also meet new faces and, and hear about your programs and what you do. But before I get started today, I would like to take a little personal privilege I think I told you yesterday that I'm from Ohio. I even did OH. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, my brother played football at Ohio State. I grew up about 30 miles south of here. So my roots run very deep. And um, I'm one of the lucky ones. Both of my parents are still alive. Um, my father's here today, and I wanted to introduce him. He taught me my work ethic and and uh, at the age of 80, 29, sorry, Dad, almost told. <laughs> but anyhow, I'd like to personally, in front of everyone, thank my father for the life I have and for still being with me today.
but I can just hear the criticism when I'm done about what I could have done a little different. Just kidding, Dad, just kidding. So. so anyhow, before we get started this afternoon, and we are going to leave the topic just a little bit, um, uh, because I want to talk to you about the future of Senior Corps and what's happening going forward. And some of you that were in Denver, how many were in Denver? I know there was a few of you in Denver. Have heard some of it. How many were in D.C. for the Elder Justice Conference? Oh, a lot. I didn't speak there, so this, maybe this will be new. So anyhow, but before we get started, we had invited um, Senator Rob Portman to be with us today. But as you might imagine, his role as senator often prevents his participation in all events. And we want him in Washington, D.C. doing what he needs to be doing. So nevertheless, he sent us a special video message. And along with that message, he was kind enough to send Jason Knox, his Central Ohio um, director. In his role as district director, Jason cultivates and maintains relationships with organizations such as ours and leaders to help further the senator's priorities. He's a native Buckeye. He's a graduate of the Ohio State University. But in his role for the senator, he um, has been working to ensure that Central Ohio leaders have all the tools and resources they need to fight the op opioid epidemic. So to introduce the senator's video, we welcome Jason Knox to the podium. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here at this timely and important seminar to talk about a critical issue. Senator Portman sends his regards and wishes he could be here today. And thank you to Debbie Cox Roush for your leadership and obviously inviting Senator Portman to be a part of this, uh, this event. Thank you CNCS for tackling the opioid drug issue head on and in increasing your organization's response to this crisis. It is important that we have an all hands on deck approach to fighting this epidemic. Senator Portman is committed to making sure the federal government continues to do its part to fight this epidemic. A few weeks ago, he introduced the Combating Meth and Cocaine Act. This legislation will build off of the progress that we've made already and will continue the state opioid response grants through 2024 at $500 million a year and would provide flexibility for the funding to be used to treat rising instances of meth and cocaine use. Deadly opioids like fentanyl are often mixed with meth and cocaine, so this flexibility is needed, and that's what we've heard from, from the experts on the ground. I urge you all to reach out to our office if we can be helpful or if you have feedback you would like to get to Senator Portman. And for those of you who are here from other states beyond Ohio, um, it's very important that you reach out to your senators um, because I think that having that dialogue is incredibly important to inform policy going forward. Thank you very much for um, allowing Senator Portman to be a part of this, this uh, ceremony or, or this uh, event with a video. And um, without further ado, we'll, we'll play the video. Thank you. Hi, I'm U.S. Senator Rob Portman. I'd like to thank the Corporation for National and Community Service for inviting me to speak with you all today at this senior core seminar on the opioid epidemic. I wish I could be with you in person, but I'm with you in spirit and in Washington voting today. It's an issue that's very important to me and to our state of Ohio. We've been one of the hardest hit in the country by this epidemic of addiction to dangerous and deadly opioids. For years, it's been one of my top priorities here in Washington to try to help our communities in Ohio that have been so devastated by the crisis. And we've been able to accomplish some important things in the last few years, including passing legislation like the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, historic legislation that for the first time ever funds long-term recovery and helps with regard to treatment and prevention. Also the STOP Act to try to keep this deadly fentanyl from coming in from China. Over the last few years, in fact, we've secured more than $3 billion in additional funds to combat the epidemic through more innovative approaches to treatment, longer term recovery, but also prevention. And after eight years of rising overdose rates, meaning increasing overdose death rates every single year in the last eight years, we're finally seeing some progress in reducing those overdose death rates. In fact, in Ohio, we've had about a 20% reduction last year in our death rates, which is from a very unacceptably high watermark. So there's still a long, long way to go. I'm so glad you all are contributing towards solving this pressing crisis. It's facing so many communities around the country. I wish you the best of luck. Your work is really important. Godspeed.
thank you, Jason, so much. And thank you for all the work that you're doing to educate Central Ohioans, especially its older residents, on this highly important issue. I'd like our Ohio CNCS team to please stand so we can recognize you for the work that you're doing. And Jason, I hope that Senator Portman's office connects with our ladies from Ohio because they're doing amazing things, and there's, but there's, we all know there's so much more that we could be doing. So thank you for being with us today. Now, let's kind of change gears. Everybody ready to change gears? How's your morning been? Good? Are we learning a lot? I learn something new every day, so isn't that amazing? So, but let's talk about what lies ahead. Um, as CNCS transitions, and we all know that we're transitioning to a regional stru structure, we thought that today's luncheon should focus on the senior core progress over the past year. And then I want to provide you with a brief update on some of the details of our transformation and sustainability plan, the what lies ahead for senior core future. First, let me say, and I'm very proud to say, all in all, senior core has had a really good year. Let me cite just a few of our accomplishments. You know, when I first became, came on board as the Senior Corps Director, I was honored to be appointed by the President, but I thought, at the end of this, when it's all over, what will I do? And I wanted to make sure that my legacy was, we leave it better than I found it. And I can only do that with all of you. But I think I told all of you the very first time I spoke to you at the convening in Washington, D.C., two years ago, gosh, two years already, um, that I wanted to make, she, see, make sure Senior Corps was not America's best kept secret. And that my goal would be to keep, to make sure that we weren't that secret any longer. So today, I think I'm proud to say, we're making strides in that arena, particularly among our sister federal agencies. We have collaborations on various levels. You know, I'm a firm believer, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's work with our federal partners. Let's work with our private partners. Let's spend taxpayers' dollars wisely. So at this time, we have collaborations with the Department of Justice. You heard Lance yesterday from HHS, Administration for Community Living, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, the Veterans Health Administration, the Federal Trade Commission, and the Postal Inspection Service, among others. You all heard about our VA partnership where we have Senior Corps Choose Home where in five cities across the country, veterans are being able to stay in their home because of the work that you all are doing of matching veterans and veterans in, our, in a hybrid of our Senior Companion and RSVP program. We also are looking now at working with the Department of Justice on a new demonstration project where our RSVP volunteers will serve along Adult Protective Services to help um, the Department of Justice and APS continue to do the work that they do. So stay tuned on that one. And then Monday, I will have a meeting with the Veterans Affairs Committee where senior Corps volunteers will work with veterans that are homeless to help them get um, taxes done, legal work done, um, a little bit of everything. So stay tuned on that because that's still developing. But it shows our collaboration with federal agencies and they continue to grow. But you know what the most important aspect of this collaboration is, is that now, when federal agencies are thinking about projects that they would like to implement, and it takes volunteers, the first thing they think about is Senior Corps. We should all be really happy about that. That's something that didn't happen before, but they've come to understand how valuable our programs and volunteers can be in helping them carry out their missions. Now that we are top of minds when they seek solutions for real progress, and as your director, I want to thank you Thank you and the work that you do in your communities for that progress. So let's give yourselves a round of applause. You know, another thing that happened this year, this past year, in addition to the partnerships, we implemented the new long awaited senior core regulation changes. We believe that implementing these new rules help to ease some of your burdens. We don't need to regulate you more. We finally eliminated the 80-20 rule. You can clap. 
and provided you more flexibility in managing your programs. You know, it was a long process that finally, but finally came to fruition this past January. And there's somebody sitting in this room, Jill, stand up. I want you all to know that these regulation changes would have never happened if Jill Sears hadn't worked night and day and making it happen. In February, we released the results of our Senior Core Foster Grandparent and Senior Companion Health Benefits Longitudinal Study. You know, it kills me that we had to do a study to prove what we all know. Volunteering is good for your health. Rob Cox on my staff led that study. He has been stationed at our exhibit booths out in the hallway, so I hope you had a chance to talk to him. But, um, Rob, thank you for all your work you've done in the longitudinal study. You can stand up. I also like his last name. So I encourage you to meet with Rob today. I think he flies out kind of early, so we have a little bit of time left with you. But I also encourage you to use what we found out in this study to conduct your local recruitment and outreach efforts, to meet your local and state congressional members. Senator Portman needs to hear from you. Seek local funders for your programs, and also be sure to share it with your volunteers during your monthly in-service meetings. To support you with this broader outreach, we've stockpiled copies of the issue brief that you can order free of charge from our CNCS publication warehouse. We continue to work with our chief risk officer to contact, to, well, we just contracted a vendor channeler and provided grant augmentations to help you implement the three components of the criminal history check. I will tell all of you that I will be really glad that I can go to sleep at night and not think about criminal history checks. That day is going to come. <laughs> you know, I think most of you took part in the exemption period. You know, it, it's important. The criminal history checks are important. We work with a vulnerable population. But um, one of these days I'm going to dream about better things than criminal history checks. But. Um, the exemption period, you know, helped with the disallowance, helped with it, and helped with your noncompliance, and so we hope that it worked. It ended on June 30th, and I'm really proud to say that we had almost 100% of participation from our grantees, and the very few that opted out were RSVP programs that only had staff. So I give all of you credit for going back and making it right, and so thank you very much. And I really, just really know it was a laborious process. I'm still getting questions. And I know we'll continue to get questions. But I believe our projects and our volunteers are better served from you having gone through this process. And now that you're in the system, I encourage you to please stay in the system and utilize it for new volunteers that you bring on board. I want you all to know that we had a meeting a week ago because I'm trying to figure out how can we make the vendor better. Um, now that we've had seven months of a give and take, honestly, um, how can we make the vendor better? How can we get him, the vendor to help check the names to make sure that human error doesn't happen? So we just got an email today that the, they're, still, they're talking to the contractor, and so stay tuned. We know it's not a cure-all, but again, it's just such, such an important aspect of what we have to do to make sure that the folks that we serve are, are safe. Um, I know that you just recently received a revised guide to enforcement action. Um, if you haven't seen it, but I'm sure you have, please be sure to check your email and review this guide carefully as it includes new compliance remedies and a new cost-based disallowance structure. I have asked um, OPRO to hold another training and conference call with all of you because I did not feel that you got what you really needed out of the first one. And so when Robin and I get back, we'll make sure that we get that call set up so we can actually do more discussion on the disallowance policy and the enforcement guide and training to help you with training. In the midst of all this activity, we conducted a highly competitive RSVP competition this past year that awarded $13.6 million to fund 50,000 RSVP volunteers in 150 communities in 40 states. So, you know, I kind of think Senior Corps had a pretty good year, but I think 2020 is going to get even better. As we look forward to 2020, I expect that momentum, momentum that we've been talking about today and that you've asked for to continue to grow. I'm pleased to say, and Jason, back me up on this, 
Congressional appropriations for us looks promising. But let me remind you, it is a long process. <laughs> so what I'm saying today may not be what it looks like in October, but we still feel very positive about what we've heard. The new appropriations are estimating that they will award Senior Corps $13.4 more million dollars in appropriations in 2020. As I say, it's a long process, but I hope that that continues. Congress knows how hard we work. It will help with FGP and SCP increasing the stipend. It will help us do more money for RSVP. So um, like I say, don't go out and say we got 13.4 million for sure. We did that. We do not. No press in here, right? But um, we're, very, we're very encouraged about, about what we're hearing out of the appropriations front. Sometime this summer, we are going to roll out, actually, I think soon, really soon, a uh, new RSVP competition. And we want to keep these programs in the communities. And we also want to bring new sponsor organizations into our portfolio. I'm proud to say, just last week, we announced a special RSVP augmentation, which is a permanent increase to the baseline funding. And we hope you take advantage of this opportunity. I had an RSVP, you can clap. <laughs> I had an RSVP grantee tell me that's the best news she's heard since 2011, so I'm glad to see that we could do that. So, you know, a lot's happening with Senior Corps, and we would just want to keep the momentum going and keep growing. But I also want to talk about the elephant in the room, because as all of you know, CNCS has been diligently working on our transformation and sustainability plan that moves us from a state structure to a regional one. Two-thirds of our brick-and-mortar state spaces are now closed, but the offices are operational as staff in those states are teleworking full-time. And I do give credit to our state officers. On Wednesday before July 4th, I got a call from a grantee in Florida. Now, it's the day before one of the biggest holidays of the year, and she had a problem. I called Billy in Florida and Samson at headquarters, and within an hour, that problem was solved. So kudos to the state folks that are still working very, very hard out in the field. We are very proud of them. You know, as we're beginning uh, the realignment of new roles and new assignments and interviews are occurring for portfolio managers, senior portfolio managers, and this process will just continue. We're also in the process of reviewing for program analyst positions, and I will tell you that Senior Corps it just made an offer yesterday to fill, fill for what you all may, some of you older folks may know as Tamika's position, but we'll be hiring a new management and program analyst for Senior Corps, so we're kind of excited about that. However, I want to share with you, I um, recently announced some of the members of the new regional structure. And by the way, you are setting in Columbus, Ohio, which will be one of the new regional offices is, I think it's in the second round. Am I right, Jen? Second round? Second round. But Kristen Davis has joined the CNCS team from HHS. As the Deputy Director for Regional Operations, she'll be reporting to Aaron McGrath. And you all should feel pretty good about Aaron McGrath being the Director of uh, Operations, Regional Operations, because we have a friend in high places, so that's a good thing. And many of you will know some of our CNCF staff who's transitioning to new positions. Maggie Garvey, who was the state program director for Kansas, will now be the regional administration in the Northeast region, which is Concord, New Hampshire. Michael Laverty, who serves as the Southwest Cluster and Area Manager, will transition to regional administrator for the North Central region, Kansas City. You can clap. And Ken Goodson, that I think when we were in Denver, a lot of you got to meet Ken, who was the Southwest Regional Director for NCCC, will transition to the Region Administrator for our Mountain Region, which is in Denver. New Regional Deputy Directors, and I'm going to be cry here, were announced on Friday. And Senior Corps good, and I hate to lose them, but they took two of our people. Jill Sears will be the new Deputy Director of Denver. And Sarah Albright, who is the Senior Corps Technical Writer Editor, will be the new Deputy Director in Kansas City. So, 
I'm really proud that they got promoted, but I'm really sad that they're leaving me. <laughs> but anyhow, congratulations, Jill. It's a great thing. So anyhow, it's a great thing. Now we have some more good news for Senior Corps. Robin, will you stand? How many knows Robin as the director for Tennessee and Kentucky? Woo, 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 right? Sorry, I took her from you. <laughs> On July 8th, Robin joined CNCS headquarters in Washington, D.C. as the new deputy director for Senior Corps. Um, I'm so delighted, Robin, that you've joined the team, our small but mighty team. And I will tell you all, she's been with me a week, and I already know just what a tremendous asset she's going to be to Senior Corps. So welcome aboard, Robin. <laughs> As I told you all earlier, you know, Jill just keeps rising, just keeps rising. <laughs> she is, uh, has been serving as our acting, acting deputy director, so again, she deserves a huge round of applause. She kept the space warm until Robin came in, so again, Jill, thank you so very, very much. Um, <laughs> what'd you say? I don't know what I'd done without her, though. Um, her guidance and support and her friendship. Um, I kept forgetting that she was living in Denver and I would schedule a meeting for eight o'clock in the morning. Well, that's six o'clock in Denver and she'd have to be on the phone, but you know what? She never missed one. Thank heavens we didn't have video conferencing calls because I don't know what she looked like on the other end. But Jill, we, Senior Corps appreciates and even though you're going on to bigger and better horizons, or should I just say not really, we're the, still the biggest and better horizon, right? Um, we thank you for your help and we, we will still continue to bother you. Okay, good. And it's good for us that we're going to have a senior corps member that's going to be out in these regions that can fight for us, right? Good. Um, other transition news is uh, there's a group focusing on exploring the CNCS brand and improving recruitment. If you've heard rumors about what the agency is going to be called, that's what they are, rumors. Nothing's been decided yet. The research will probably be released sometime in the fall for you all to see, for you all to give impact and input. Um, but we are working on recruitment. Um, I've heard from many of you that recruitment is an issue. So hopefully soon we'll be able to announce to you a national recruitment effort led by um, headquarters to help you all in recruiting your volunteers. So stay tuned on that. One thing we're doing, um, you know, I always worry about how our seniors or older Americans, when they want to volunteer, how do they find out about us? Or how do they reach you? So we are setting up a Pathfinder program where a volunteer can actually just go right online. They can look up by their zip code or the county they live in, what programs are in that county, in their state, and they'll be able to contact you directly and will not have to go through Washington headquarters any longer. So if I'm a volunteer in Fayette County, Ohio, I can see the program that's in Fayette County, Ohio, and I can call Jen Irwin up, no, I'm sorry, not Jen, the grant, the director of the grant, the executive director of the grant, and say, hey, I live in Washington Courthouse, I wanna volunteer for you. So we're gonna remove that middleman so your volunteers will come straight to you. So I think that's gonna be a big plus, stay tuned on that, we're still working through it, but we should have that out, I'm thinking, next month or so yeah um, you can clap about that I love when you clap it makes me think know that you're happy about this so um, you a brand awareness was a uh, survey was distributed and I hope that all you took it. It, it it is closed now but I hope that you many of you were able to access it and take it a third-party research firm is going to compile and synthesize all the data and as I told you it'll probably be released this fall as to what we think we might do going forward when it comes to branding for the Corporation for National Community Service. Sometime this summer, um, we'll release more information on that. But I will tell you through this whole process, the biggest concern of mine, and I'm excited about the regionalization. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I think as Senior Corps Director and as your Program Director, I will have more opportunity to give input into how training works, how programs work in the field, the information you receive, and I will stay on top of that and make sure that happens. But one thing I do have a concern about is outreach for Senior Corps. 
I know how important the outreach is for each one of you on the local level. And while outreach and partnerships positions are not posted yet, I want you to know that I continue to stress every day the importance of the role for Senior Corps and that it's a high priority for me that you get the outreach you need when it comes to your opportunities in your community. So you all know, just last week, week, I recently decided to submit a procurement action which will instill a contractor for Senior Corps that will perform outreach services in all of our new regions. We are still in the planning process, but I want you to know that I'm doing everything possible to make sure that the message for Senior Corps happens where you live, work, and play. You know, there's so much happening, there's other things happening. The business process work group is still going on and they're determining ways that we can stream, streamline the process. You know, I sent, I'm gonna, Barbara might kill me for telling you this, but I talk too much sometimes. I sent the NOFA for the 2020 RSVP process to Barbara for clearance, right? And she came back to me and she said, is this really that complicated? I said, well, we have to go by federal guidelines, Barbara, so we have federal guidelines we have to stay on. But, you know, they're working to streamline some of our processes, and we all know. We want you all to be able to do the work that you are made to do, and that's impact your communities. We don't want you sitting at a desk doing a lot of paperwork, so we're working through that. And we also have a training working group that I'm hoping that we'll be able to share more with you how the training of the new regions and all of the current trainings are happening. So I think it's been a good year for Senior Corps. You know, for years at CNCS, we've operated in the same way, receiving, receiving some of the same negative reactions from Congress. We want to change that. I know that for many of you, our current transformation change is difficult. Change is always difficult. But I believe that when the dust settles, CNCS and Senior Corps will be better because of the changes that we're making. I had lunch with Lisa Mars Ryerson, the president of the AARP Foundation a couple weeks ago. AARP went through the same thing a couple years ago. And she tells me now when they talk about it or they said at lunch, she said, you know, I wondered why we didn't do this sooner. I also don't remember who said this, but there's a famous quote that reads something like this. I cannot change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails. We can't change transforma transformation, folks, but we can adjust our thinking and put forward our best ideas for change that occurs in a way that benefits Senior Corps, our programs, most importantly, our volunteers in the community we work in. You should know that the Board of Directors for the three Senior Corps associations have been meeting with me monthly and with the staff from the Transformation Office and sharing your grantees' concerns. If you're a member of one of these associations, please express your thoughts, concerns, and ideas with your leadership, who will then share them with us. I can tell you that several changes have already been made because of your recommendations, and I hope you will continue to send them forward. Finally, let me say to you, you are some of the most dedicated individuals, Kleenex that I've ever become, ever known. The work that you do, your understanding of volunteering, and the impact that you have in your communities is amazing. <laughs> when I came on board, they thought I was just an appointee. But you guys have made me believe in everything you do and the impact that you make. Senior Corps has tremendous momentum right now, and I intend to work to ensure that we keep moving forward in a direction that makes us and our programs a household name. Finally, before I get, before I forget, before I cry anymore, you guys are just amazing. And I look at this video at the beginning and the thing that gives me hope in that video is because I know in Roan County, Tennessee, they're already doing work. I know in Columbus, Ohio, and in outside of Ohio that they're passing out Dextera bags to help those get rid of prescription drugs. 
I know that foster grandparents are working with children every day that are at risk. A little boy had a t-shirt on when I went to visit a foster grandparent program in Savannah, Georgia, and it said, I'm going to take over the world. The only opportunity the little boy has to take over the world is because he's got a foster grandparent setting with him, giving him the love and the nurturing that he may not get at home. I visited yesterday with an 87-year-old senior companion. Oh, these two were a hoot, let me tell you. <laughs> and her client, of course, they went back and forth at each other all the time. She goes, I don't need her with me. She just gives me a hard time anyhow. But they're together seven days a week now. They are having tonight a senior prom in Dayton, Ohio. But this senior companion is the lifeline. I had another senior companion client that told me that she probably would have committed suicide had it not been for the senior companion that came and visited her three or four times a week because she's not lonely anymore. So what you do is important. And I hate that I still get tears, but they're real because you all make a difference every single day. So give yourself a round of applause. So finally, before I forget, I want to thank my senior core staff, Brian, Rob, Jill, Robin. There's nobody else here right this second. I'm not done, right? <laughs> and Jan, John, Ann, and everybody that's still back in DC keeps sending us information. Um, because without the great work that they do, I wouldn't be standing here. So thank you all. You're so appreciated. It does take a, high, a team of highly dedicated and motivated staff to carry out these events. So Jason, I hope you go back and tell Senator Portman that great things are happening in Senior Corps and make sure that these grantees get to continue to do, and these program officers and directors continue to do the work they do every day that often goes without thanks that often is not recognized, but we know it happens. So now as we leave this venue, there's still a couple great things this afternoon. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart, and I ask you and pray for your continued success. Thank you. Thank you.